So an anti-gun an anti-gun group in Illinois has launched a new campaign that's being called Teddy Gun. Check it out. Teddy bears need to follow strict safety manufacturing guidelines. Scores of safety regulations, 90 pages of requirements, numerous rules across federal and state regulatory bodies. Unless that teddy bear is a gun. <laughs> Join me to talk about this ridiculous video. <laughs> CEO of Patriot Ordnance Factory, Ordnance Factory, Frank DeSoma. <sighs> Frank, talk to me, man. What, 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 what is this? <laughs> um, a political cartoon by a bunch of fools that have an agenda. I mean, the tens of thousands of laws against gun owners, the rights of gun owning firearms in this country, you know, a constitutional right but they have so many regulations and guidelines to do. I mean, why would they have 90 pages of stuff on a teddy bear? Because how many of those teddy bears are made in the USA anymore? Most of them are from foreign countries. That's a good point. They have no type of regulatory anything. Yeah. So to protect our children, they do something like that. But this is totally absurd. You know, who guards... Look at the guidelines and the laws, state laws, federal laws on firearms and protection of that. Chicago, look at all the extra laws they have there. They, all these gun laws have done nothing to reduce crime and deaths with firearms in those states. Yeah, it's it, so, the, the interesting thing is, I mean, this, this was basically a 43-minute red herring um, designed to kind of take advantage of people's ignorance who don't know much about firearms and then to play on their emotions by incorporating the aspect of guns are less regulated than teddy bears um yeah. which is why they which is why they kind of put together did the commercial the way they did they kind of left the question open you know except if you're a gun and that was it um the interesting thing is the the entire basis for this commercial is predicated on the notion that guns are exempt from the consumer product safety commission and so in their mind, so th that, that's the only basis for why they feel like teddy bears are regulated more than guns, because guns aren't included. But what they don't say is the reason why guns aren't included or exempted from that regulatory agency is because anti-gun groups like the Brady campaign have tried to use the group to essentially ban bullets from handguns. Uh, so basically, handgun, they tried to ban handgun rounds. Um, that are used in, you know, handguns. And, and, and they, the court was like, no, you, this, this government agency isn't allowed to do that. Um, and so they, they provided these exemptions. And the gun industry isn't the only industry that's exempt from this. You also have the tobacco industry, the car industry, the pesticide industry, and aircraft industries who are also exempt from this regulatory agency. Yeah, alcohol is the same way. <laughs> So, I mean, you could do the same thing. How about we do this? What if, could you imagine what if, if they didn't collect excise tax from any of these evil things they hate so much and talk about, where would our society be right now? We're 20 trillion in debt because we have a bunch of fools in Congress that don't know what it takes to operate anything. They just print, they put ink on paper and call it money, money that is worth something of value. All I can say is this, thank God there's the NRA, thank God there's people like you that have shows that tell all sides of the story, because I believe you're fair and honest, yes, you are the NRA radio show, but you as an individual, you're speaking on that mic, you have no reason to tell a lie, or half-truth, or sway someone anything. The only reason we're speaking up the way we are now is because we're tired yeah. of what we thought the media was supposed to be, the knights in shining armor that would keep it fair for everyone and let us let the people that are working every day all day long know if Congress is being honest and forthright 
or are they criminal in what they're doing? And they've become activists. Yeah. So people like you have to stand up and tell the truth on everything that comes out because it's a nonstop barrage of garbage. I mean, I mean, the media has basically taken advantage of their positioning. We all grew up with the seeing that these cable news networks, these um, non-cable news networks, and just in general, we got all of our information and we consumed it from our TVs. Um, and we got them from these big networks. The problem is, is they started, like they say, absolute power co corrupts absolutely. Now they've, they've understood that power, and then they started, like you said, they've turned into activists. So now they've basically t taken their platform and weaponized it, and it's weaponized propaganda, if you ask me. And at this point now, we've, got, we've, we've been forced to find alternative mediums to get our information because we can't rely on the information we're getting from the main news sources because they all have an agenda, and it's completely and utterly biased. To be honest with you, I have every right to be biased. I mean, I am an activist. I don't hide the fact that I'm, that I'm a gun rights advocate. So from that standpoint, I'm, of course I'm going to be biased. But when so, you're... Go yeah, ahead. but are you an activist against what? The constitutional right you have? That makes you an activist? Come the, on. Yeah. Let's I mean, get real. Well, the, the irony is that they've created an environment where, yes, I've had to become an activist for my own personal rights and the rights of other people because they refuse <laughs> to do the job themselves. You know, they were supposed to be the ones that were objective and giving us the news objectively, but yet they, they haven't done that. They've taken advantage of the fact that a lot of people don't know a lot of these issues and then taken it and spun it and, and spun it for their own advantage and their own gain. And so now here we are in a situation where I'm forced to get my news elsewhere because I can't completely and wholly depend on the news agencies that I used to rely on growing up. And it's really disconcerting. It is. It is. All those famous people that you would see, Walter Cronkite, Con Walter Cronkite, ethical man. And then what all the people around him, you thought they were, and then you start seeing them in today's world, and it's like now they're skewed. They're not talking honesty. This is a campaign of the same thing, using this poor little cute <laughs> teddy bear for their stupid agenda to try to make fools of people or people that stupid and ignorant out there. I think 2016 was quite a revolutionary year in what transpired. A lot of things transpired that shouldn't have expired. So, yeah. you know, like Trump wasn't supposed to win, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now you have a president that's tweeting stuff going right around the media and it pisses them off because they're... They're irrelevant, and what pisses them off, I think, more than anything, is he's showing the world how irrelevant they are. They are meaningless. There are people that are piping off, I mean, including Congress. When you have 537 people that think they're going to rule us, the people of this country, they better start working with one another. They need to work with one another. Or I'm good with 51% and move forward. At least a decision's made. Yeah. Good, bad, or different. I would never own a business where something was never getting done. You'd be bankrupt and gone. Yeah. You got to make a decision and roll with it. Yep. No, no, absolutely. Um, where and what, where what a, common sense get lost in this world? It, it's, it's really hard to tell in a lot of ways, just simply because when you look at it, right, like when we, we let's, let's hyper focus as I always do on the issue of firearms. You know, we ask the question, are people really that dumb or are people really that stupid? And then sometimes I have to sit back and I ask myself, I'm like, well, think about it a little bit deeper, Colin. Um, if I'm somebody who's not that invested in the gun rights issue and I get the vast majority of my information from the mainstream media, I am not I don't really I'm not really incentivized to go and find out or seek out other mediums to get information because I think everything that they're telling me is the truth. Well, then. You know, you're, you're correct. Yeah. So why don't we do this then? Why don't we start a campaign and we got to do a 4473 and a background check and approval from ATF to own a, own a vehicle today? Because vehicles in Europe are slaughtering people like crazy. Yeah. So why don't we do that? Because vehicles kill more people each year in this country than firearms do. Way more. So why don't we start issuing license and do background checks, find out even if they're a citizen in this country, and go right through it. And you don't drive that four, six, eight thousand pound weapon unless you get a background check. 
I are mean, you doing drugs? I mean, pretty- are you doing drugs? <laughs> You know, do you smoke dope? Do you do any of those things like they question? And they question the doctors questioning us. Did you drive a vehicle here to the doctor's office today? Yeah. Why not? It's a weapon. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, I mean, you we- can call anything a weapon, like our hands. Our hands are weapon if they're used a certain way, aren't they? Yeah. So it's all about responsibility. That's all it's ever been about. You got complete fools, and humans are animals. We have minds, we have hands, we do stupid things, and we do phenomenally great things. It's just, that. what point do you, what type of a human being do you want to be? So yeah. do you punish the rest of the human race for one person that's a complete fool? Or do you deal with that issue? I mean, I, I also find it pretty ironic that they were the first ones to call us silly when we tried to analogize the gun issue to the car issue. And they say it's not the same. But yet here we are analogizing guns to teddy bears. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> we, we at our company, we employ American citizens. We're building a new factory here in Arizona. Yeah. We're investing in America and investing in the patriots of this company, country by hiring them and trying to grow a business and grow what's the dream of the American dream from starting from a garage, from an idea and a concept and having passion, perseverance and a, and a, a can do attitude and never quit. That's the greatness of America. And it doesn't matter what color our skin is. It's all to do here and here. Absolutely. If you're a good person, keep pushing and pushing. You know what? At the end of the day, when we're on our deathbed, at the end of the day, at least you could tell yourself, I tried, even if you can't lie to yourself. Yeah. So if you tried and you never reached what you did, at least you lived a life instead of sitting back waiting for someone to hand it to you. Live it. Do things. Stop trying to be politicians that do nothing. What does a politician do? They know nothing, they do nothing, they build nothing, they create nothing, and they want to control and dictate everything. Couldn't they make it on their own in the real world? Most of them couldn't. Yep, absolutely. Well, spoken from the, from the man himself, Frank DeSoma. Good knowledge. <laughs> Pretty harsh. Yeah, Pretty no, harsh, no, but sometimes. Said, but it's sometimes. probably a lot factual. How many of us bust our ass out there to make a living working two, three jobs sometimes to get by? And these people are on constant vacation and getting paid for the rest of their life. And by the way... They exempted themselves from Obamacare. If it was such a great thing, they should have had it. And I'm sorry, this has nothing to do with the teddy bear, but in the same way, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same. Well, it's piece no of different. Art it's no different. It's, it's no. Thrown at us. It's no different from them advocating for more gun control laws while they have private security guards that carry guns as well. So I mean, it's 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 you know. There's no there's, common there's sense here. There, there isn't. But uh, but uh, thank you very much, Frank. I always enjoy speaking with you, man. Um, Same def- here. When we come I'm back, sorry maybe- if I went a little sideways, but it's all relative, isn't uh, it? Hey, on this show, pretty much anything goes. <laughs> Me- kind of, maybe a little bit, of anything goes. <laughs> I- I'm gonna take it that far. <laughs> but, but no, but thank you very much, Frank, and I, I definitely have a good day. And please come back on the we show, talk- and maybe we can actually talk about guns, so we don't have to talk about teddy bears. <laughs> <laughs> take care. Absolutely, Frank. Thank God you very much, America. Yes, sir. We've got another quick break and then we'll look at what's being called the most realistic gun training possible.